Man. I tell you what, man, sunrises are just simply just most spectacular thing that you can come experience. Okay, so I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna set up. I got my minnows, I got my shiners, I got my sandwich. 62 degrees this morning. So I'm in the Ocala National Forest. I always say that I'm coming to go bass fishing, but the truth of the matter is, here where I fish, I can catch anything. I've caught catfish, speckled perch, bluegill, brim, bass. So, uh, yeah. So greetings and welcome to Doe Lake in the Ocala National Forest. I'm out here trying to catch another bass. I really slow this morning. I caught uh, a good sized bass. I'd say probably a two pounder. Uh, oh, I don't know, about 30 minutes ago. And then I caught a good sized speckled perch and I hadn't caught anything before that. So I didn't catch a single fish until 9 o'clock, and uh, I've been out here since 6.30. You saw the sunrise. Got out here sunrise. Anyway, this is the Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman YouTube channel. My name is Peter Updike, and uh, I want to welcome you today to my to my setup, to my fishing fishing setup. Uh, fishing has always been, for me, the, the springboard to all things outdoors. Uh, if, you took, if you took fishing out of the equation, I probably, uh, I probably would not be the outdoorsman that I am today and uh, my grandfather introduced me to fishing at a very young age in fact I was on Instagram and Bill Dance who uh, I follow on Instagram asked his viewers a question he says what 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 do you what is the earliest remembrance that you have of fishing and uh, I to be honest with you I cannot remember the first time I baited a hook I cannot remember the first fish I caught I only remember events. I got something on my lens here. Let me get it off. I only remember events that uh, that were pivotal, right? Uh, I remember going fishing with my grandfather, and I remember catching uh, fish here and there. But uh, there are there are certain things that I remember when, when I lived in in Eustis. When I was a small boy growing up in Eustis, there was a place called Trout Run. Now Trout Run was a body of water a little stream that ran it wasn't a stream it was just a, a canal all right it was a it was a natural wooded canal that ran between Lake Eustis and Trout Lake my grandmother lived on Trout Lake so I would uh, I would go stay with grandma then I would ride my bicycle down to Trout Run it was a uh, it was a sure enough community atmosphere if you lived in Eustis and you wanted to go fishing trout run was one of the places you'd go and when the fish were biting boy the people would line up on that bank and uh, mostly folks from the black community you had some white folks down there too but mostly black community they would go down there and and you were able to dig worms underneath the, the oak trees and the cypress trees there along the bank and you there was always a shovel there and a hoe and people would come down and, and dig worms and then go fishing and 
and uh, it, it was a, it's a very fond memory for me, and I remember that vividly. I remember going down there and fishing and talking to those people, and a lot of them didn't talk to me. I remember seeing two women of the uh, of the black community, and they were elderly women, and I always remember seeing them sitting on five gallon buckets, and they wore big straw hats and had the the white aprons on, you know, and they were stained because they'd wiped their hands on their aprons. And they'd sit on that bank and fish. And uh, and it was quite an experience as a small boy growing up there. One, one day I was down there fishing, and now Fisherman's Bait and Tackle was the bait shop that was nearby. And uh, I would go down there and I'd buy a half a dozen shiners. I like fishing with shiners, and I like fishing with shiners to this day. The wind has gotten up. But, uh, I was down there, and I hooked a pretty good-sized bass, and I was standing there on the bank. There was a railroad trussle there, and, uh, and folks used to sit out on that railroad trussle and catch fish until the train came by and everybody had to get off the track. But, uh, that was an interesting, an interesting, interesting place. But anyway, I was fishing and I hooked a big bass, a big bass, probably a three pounder. And uh, it got tangled up in the weeds. And one of them women come over there where I was at and started coaching me as far as getting that fish to shore. And he got tangled up around some weeds there and I couldn't, I couldn't get him in. Again, I was probably 10, 11, 12 years old. And uh, that woman, she dove off in that water down to her waist and got that fish for me and pulled it up out of that them weeds and man I was so excited and she was telling me man that's a great fish right there that's a great looking back I think she probably wanted me to give her that fish but uh I I, I probably should have gave it to her but I didn't that's the biggest bass I ever caught you know I'm a 12 year old kid with the biggest bass I ever caught yeah I ain't gonna give that fish away but uh I kept it and took it home I got a picture of that fish somewhere at home but uh I remember that, but but that's really all I remember. I, I just remember, you know, pivotal events. So anyway, uh, I'm up here on Doe Lake, and the same people that are up here that were up here last time are up here now, and that's that's nobody. Look at this. Come up here and go fishing, have the whole lake to myself. That's pretty. That's pretty cool. So I'm I'm waiting for a fish to take a take another bite and pull that cork under. It really feels great when uh, you see that cork go under. I like keeping my fishing simple. If you can't afford a big bass boat, maybe you can afford a canoe. If you can't afford a Bantam 1000 Shimano reel, maybe you can afford a Zebco. That's what I've got. I've got I got my Garcia reel here, and it's a good reel. But I got I got a high end Zebco, and then I've got couple of little Zepcos here I bought for my grandchildren when I go fishing with my grandchildren but uh yeah I like I like fishing it's it it has been the springboard to everything that I do in the outdoors if it wasn't for fishing I probably wouldn't be a deer hunter I probably wouldn't be a turkey hunter I probably wouldn't be an elk hunter probably wouldn't do all the things in the outdoors that I do and love it so much and uh yeah, fishing, fishing will do that to you. It will, it will, it will in, introduce you to the excitement of an un, unpredictable experience that leads to success, and that's that's what we're really after. So I'm gonna be here a little while longer. It's a beautiful day. It's a nice breeze, and that's a positive because if it wasn't, it'd sure enough be hot. My battery's flashing, telling me I'm running out. So I want to tell you guys, thanks for watching. We're gonna talk about. Uh, our quota permits coming up. Get ready because they're going to be coming time for us to apply. Where are you going to go bow hunting? Where are you going to go arch uh, muzzleloader hunting? And where are you going gun hunting? It's going to be, it's going to be exciting. I'm going to share with you my process. Um, I think we apply on the 15th of this month. So get ready. Love you guys. See you. Bye.